And the last one we need to do is the one to delete all the patients. So let me scroll up a little bit and let's, let's see if we can copy the get patient. So I'm gonna come here and copy all this and I'm gonna put this at the bottom. So let's go to the very bottom and then paste it. And then I'm gonna put a space here and I'm gonna change the name. So I'm gonna change this to delete patient. And of course, we're gonna take the request and the response and I'm gonna scroll up a little. I'm gonna go ahead and change the message. So this is gonna be delayed patient, save. And actually this is supposed to be delaying patient. So delaying patient. And let's call the delayed patient. So let's go back and change this to delayed underscore patient. Save that. And we're also gonna get the ID to delete the patient. So this code is good. We don't have to change it. So request params and an ID. But this time on the result, since we're not gonna get anything back because we just delete something, we're just gonna check to see if we have any affected roles. So here I'm gonna say affected rows. If this is bigger than zero, that means there were some rows that were affected in the table, which means the operation took place. Then we're gonna send a success response. So let's copy this response down here. Actually, I'm just gonna delete them and then paste them here and then delete these two lines. And then I'm gonna remove the exclamation mark because this is negating this statement and we don't wanna negate it. So we're not negating this and we're just checking to see if the affected row is bigger than zero, which means the operation was a success. So then we're gonna send the okay, pass in the status and we're gonna change the message as well. So patient deleted and then pass in whatever we have in the result. We could also pass no content to this. So if the patient is deleted and there's nothing in the body, but I'm just choosing to send an okay so that you can see what this response contains. So whatever this first object is, we're gonna try to access it. And then now we need to work in the else statement as you can see here. So let's go back up and see if we can copy the not found. So let's go up and let's just copy these two lines and then go down and I wanna paste them here and then save. So again, we're gonna say we didn't find the patient and then we're gonna pass in the message patient by ID, whatever the ID is, was not found. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out a little bit so you guys can see the entire thing and then I'm gonna go all the way to the top. Let's scroll down slowly. So the first function that I'm gonna highlight here is the function to get all the patients. And then the second one that we have here, uh, if I scroll up a little bit more, is to create a patient. So this one is to create a patient and it's highlighted as you can see here. And then the next one is to get one patient. So that's this one right here, to get one patient. And then the next one, I'm gonna go ahead and scroll up. So the next one is the most complicated one because we're doing two queries. And really it's just because we want to check to see if the patient is in the database before we try to update any information. But you didn't really have to do this. You could just send the update to the database. If the patient is not in the database, then it would just give you an error because it wouldn't be able to find that patient by that ID, you still get an error. So this is just for safety, but you don't really have to implement it that way. You can just have just this part right here. So the part where we actually trying to update the patient in the database. And then the last one is to delete a patient. So we're just calling the delete patient query, passing the ID, and then if the operation is successful, if we have some row that is affected in the table, then we just send a success response. Otherwise we send that the patient was not found or something like that. That's probably why the operation was unsuccessful because we didn't find that patient by that ID. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom back in and I'm gonna go all the way to the top. And that's pretty much everything that we have to do for this controller. We don't really have to do anything else. We just have all the CRUD operations and then we're just gonna use them in our route. So I would say maybe like pause the video and then take some time to take a look at these functions and you can even improve them if you want. So you can think of ways you can make them even better or you can just think of ways that you would use them in different applications. But just make sure that you understand what's going on here because it's really just simple. And the way that I know like how to access this result is because I look at it depending on the query that I'm sending. So when I send you know, a query to get all the patients, a query to like create a patient, I know what the result is gonna look like. So I know how to step into it. As you can see here, sometimes I'm just checking to see if there is something in an array as I'm doing on line 46 here. Sometimes I'm checking to see if there is any row that is affected, which is what I'm doing here on 81. So just take a look at the object whenever you send a query to the database and see what comes back. And then you will know how to step into it to access whatever you want. And then that way you can build your logic according to what you see, depending on the query. So back to the tab, go ahead and save the file. And then at this point, we're just gonna be working on the route and then we're gonna be importing all these functions. And then we should be able to test the application after we spin up a database. Because right now we have the configuration for the database, but we 
don't have any database running on my computer yet. So we're going to create the routes and then create a database and then test the application to see if everything is working as expected.